Out of the ordinary or something else, that's how I described it. It's a mini computer that fits into a graphics card and doesn't sacrifice anything, packing all its power into this compact size. But what is it? And why are they doing this? Billing sent me this computer along with this other piece and as always I want to remind you that I'm not paid. In fact, they are going possibly to be mad at me for what I'm gonna say at the end of the video. So stay if you want to know about it. And while we might think the unusual part is the GPU docked, the mini computer they sent also has its own set of peculiarities. This is the GT Ultra, made of aluminium and it's a bit larger than the mini computers we're used to from other brands, primarily because it has a 145 watts power supply built in. So if we want to take it anywhere, we only need to carry the computer without worrying about a power brick. I also think they aimed to make a highly flexible machine because it comes with all kinds of features similar to a Mac Mini from Apple. Internally, it has speakers that sound decent, plus surprisingly, it also has a built-in microphone. Among the front connections there's an SD card slot, which is a positive for many of us, until I realized it only reaches 20 megabytes per second, which is quite slow. And allow me to get back to this later. It even has a fingerprint sensor, which oddly enough I'm starting to appreciate more and more. Inside, even though it's the laptop version, it packs a lot of processing power with a 99 12900H. And the advantage is that being the laptop unit, it avoids the degradation issues from microcode that have affected their desktop units. This comes with 32GB of RAM, letting us use any software we throw at it. It has so dim RAMs that can be swapped out, but getting to them is a bit tricky. You have to remove the cover, the power supply, the speakers, you see where I'm going with this. They made it pretty difficult, there's even a video showing that it takes about an hour to get to the CPU. Fortunately, there's a dust filter on the intake indicating that we should clean that regularly and it's easy to get to it. Many features here aim to create a highly attractive mini computer by including every feature users may want. I would even say that they're trying to achieve the same appeal as the Mac Mini but inside Windows. They're also aware of its weak points, so they've tried to address them by adding the GPU dock. But first, let's see what it's able to do with the iGPU. Playing the new Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero is quite challenging. With everything set to low, I have to reduce the resolution to 900p, which keeps it around 60 FPS with some dips. I discovered that in this fighting game, if you don't reach the expected FPS, the game feels like it's in slow motion. It's playable, but the experience is altered, making of the 60 FPS a must. Counter Strike 2 is another story, running at around 120 FPS on 1080p. With low graphical settings, it's playable with a smoothness that's perfect for enjoying the game. But we know it's not a demanding title. With this unit, I can also casually work in Blender, like creating traffic simulations, vegetation and lightning with reflections. But it gets complicated when I want it to start rendering. This frame in particular took 6 minutes and 18 seconds to render, and we're talking about an animation at 24 frames per second, for 1 minute, meaning 1440 frames or 6.3 days to complete. So while it can handle some work, it's impractical for tasks requiring a dedicated GPU. At least, as I said, you can work on it in Blender because on the other hand, when I tried opening a project inside Unreal Engine using MetaHumans, capturing my face to replicate movements and create animations, it could handle it but the frame rate didn't allow for a comfortable work. And that's one thing, but then also I didn't get the graphic fidelity Unreal Engine usually provides. But this is more of a niche use case. When it comes to a high power task, if I shift to more standard usage, like working inside Photoshop, there's no issue, or even editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, where I can make use of Intel QuickSync. To address the lags of its computer, they added this external GPU dock, as I said, turning its mini computer into a full desktop experience and the power will depend on the graphics card we install. But by using an 8-lane PCI Express protocol, nothing is left on the table, opening up all possibilities. This external dock also has a 600 watts power supply, so there's no problem even adding an RTX 4090. If you open the bottom of the dock, you can also install a Wi-Fi card or even an SSD, which I think it's nice because if you install games on this unit, they will only be accessible when the graphics card is connected, making total sense. 
It's also nice that it's designed to match its devices, so I ended up with an RTX 3060 Ti because going higher seems excessive. And I won't lie, aesthetically, this Founder Edition looks perfect with it. The advantage of using PCIe directly is that, unlike Thunderbolt, they're not limited by the amount of data that can pass through it, allowing for a higher capacity with no bottleneck. Now we can enjoy playing Sparkling Zero at max settings with no problem. The only limitation is in the game itself, as this graphics engine caps at 60 FPS, so let's move on. As you can see, no game is an issue now, we can enter competitive Counter-Strike 2 with good graphics settings or go further and enjoy Cyberpunk 2077. With performance depending on the paired graphics card, it's a proper desktop PC experience now. So let's see now how it handles work. Inside Blender, we can not only work, but also preview results quickly, thanks not only to the graphics card's power, but also to NVIDIA's proprietary technology that brings specific advantages in these environments through CUDA and optics. Now, rendering a frame takes 8.8 .8 seconds which is an enormous difference. We've gone from 6 days to render the whole animation to 3.5 hours. It's not an apples to apples here, not a direct performance comparison, because with an Nvidia GPU, we can render at a low sample rate and clean up the image with their noise reduction technology using optics, giving us a quicker result and even better result in most cases. And where we couldn't work before, now we can fully preview inside Unreal Engine, proving just how essential a graphics card is for this field. One might think that this mini computer would be noisy, but it's not. I'm surprised by how quiet it is. After all, its metal casing acts as a heatsink, keeping it around 65 degrees with peaks at 81 that doesn't last more than a couple seconds. It's funny how I said at the beginning, we've gone from mounting graphics cards inside computers to mounting computers onto graphics cards. There's no doubt it's out of the ordinary, however, I don't think it will set a standard as a modular revolution. Still, they're on the right path. But I'll ask you, which of these two setups seems more portable to you? This other mini computer has everything it needs internally, including an RTX 4060. There's no need to dismantle anything and it's ready to go. On the other hand, if we detach the billing from the dock, it's a bit smaller, but I think it loses much of its value without the graphics card at least for my daily use. The idea behind this product is to leave the dock with a graphics card in a strategic location and the mini computer is handy for tasks not requiring graphic power. And now comes the tricky part, the price. With this type of product, there's often a premium for the early adopters, but I was pleasantly surprised by the price. We're talking about a mini computer with an Intel i9 12900H that comes with an external dock and a power supply for 678 euros here in Spain. I think it's a fair price, because with a graphics card like mine, for less than 1000 euros, you have a powerful setup that fits well within this price range. However, apart from the initial issues I found, difficulty with maintenance and upgrading the RAM, I think there are other areas worth discussing. Its weakest point is how inconsistent the whole setup is. The connection system, although it hasn't given me trouble, seems delicate. A large motherboard piece sticking out and connecting inside the computer, with a fixture to prevent movement, making connecting and disconnecting slower having to deal with two bolts, because it's not a hot plug. It also would have been great if they had gone with AMD's APUs, like those in portable handhelds, for greater graphics power without the external dock. We could play even without dedicated graphics, likely without affecting the price. I like the overall concept, but the execution has a long way to improve. You need two power cables and a good bit of desk space, and it's not the kind of thing you want prominently displayed in your setup. Given it's a laptop CPU, they could have opted for a dock power via USB-C, eliminating the internal power supply and creating a more compact device. When not using the dock, a 100W phone charger would be enough to power the system. Finally, back to the SD card slot, it feels like it was included just to tick a box for reviewers without focusing on the quality. It's five times slower than a proper reader, which is unacceptable for heavy files. Despite these issues, I'm sure specific users will find this setup a great solution due to its accessibility. Ultimately, this product is targeted at the very niche consumers. I'd like to see future units that resemble what competitors offer, as I found there's already a brand that solves all its issues, though at a much higher price. It uses a magnetic connector that can connect and disconnect even when powered, it's a hot plug, charging through the dock, it's the Kada's mind, but of course, you'll pay for it. 
If we say that billing with a graphics card is around 1000 euros, the Cadas mind with a similar card costs over 2.5 times as much. I'm confident that billing has the resources and capability to create something similar and bring it to the market.